Clark. Um, real quick, did everybody want your orange sheet of integrity? The orange sheet of integrity. Um, after today's talk, um, for those of you that would like a copy of the PowerPoint presentation and slides and some of the notes, I'd be happy to send that to you. Um, but one of the things that helps me, because I do speak to a couple hundred groups a year, is going through here. If you could just take a second to rate yourself, um, if you see at the bottom right here, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, how happy are you with your company's PR campaign? Obviously, if you don't have one, then probably be a 1. And if you had a great one, it might be a 10. But just so I kind of know where you're coming from. And then the second question is on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, how confident are you that you have the tools needed? Um, some people here might go, hey, I know everything that you're talking about, so I don't need any of that stuff. Thank you very much. Um, third question is on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, how much do you know uh, about PR before today's presentation? And you can see the following questions, but if you'll just go ahead and fill that out there, um, that'll help me a lot there. And then if you put your name, phone number, email after the event, I promise I won't spam you or send you a bunch of things in the mail over and over. But what I will do is I will send you a copy of the uh, PowerPoint presentation, the slides, and any follow-up questions you have, you can just call me or email me and we'll help you out there. So this is for, for your benefit, for me to know where you're coming from. And so I'll give you just a second to fill that out. In the meantime, I'll just uh, sing the Jeopardy theme song. Today's topic is how to use PR like the stars, the art of converting clicks into cash. Uh, my background, just so you know, I think that uh, sometimes the content of what you're hearing should always be weighted by uh, who are we listening to, why is this person credible, so I just want to give you a little bit of a background on who I am and, and uh, my background. Uh, I was the SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, as, as uh, Roger said. Uh, we have nine businesses, uh, we have five kids. Um, I'm always working on something big. I try to avoid direct sunlight. I'm just kind of kidding, but my wife makes fun of me because I'm inside so much, I don't go out very much. So uh, uh, I took algebra three times. So over here smarter than I am, once you get to know that. I took algebra three times to get through that. And I did take my ACT three times to get to college as well. So I want to encourage you guys that everybody here, if I can do this stuff, I promise that you can do it. Okay, so the six things we're going to go over today, six things, is one is what is the definition of public relations? Two, what are your business goals for this year? Three, how will viral and passionately positive PR help you achieve your goals? Four, why does PR work? Five, if this works, why doesn't everyone just do it? And six, what are the systematic step-by-step -step steps that you must take to launch an effective PR campaign? This is a quote I want you to either write down or just remember in your brain. I define what I do as gift wrapping. If you package a bracelet in a Tiffany box, it will have a higher perceived value than if presented in a Kmart box. Same bracelet, different perception. Well, who here remembers the British invasion? When the Beatles landed, I do not, I'm 32, so I don't remember that specifically. I've seen, the, who remembers when they landed here, okay? True story, they landed. If you, if you read a book called uh, Guerrilla PR 2.0, you can read the historical uh, review of this, but it's Guerrilla PR 2.0, phenomenal. The Beatles land, you know, from uh, Britain, they land over here. No one, knows who, no one knows who they are at this point, okay? So the kids are like, uh, who are these guys? So then their publicist says, let's try that again. He goes to a local high school, gives them signs, pays the kids five, ten bucks at the time, like a dollar each, 50 cents each. Just hold these signs and scream their names. Like, who are these people? It doesn't matter. Scream and we'll film you. And then the Beatles, Beatlemania, they took the photos, Beatlemania group. Okay? Another example, a guy by the name of Frank Sinatra. They paid someone to faint in every crowd. And then a guy by the name of Michael Jackson thought that was a good idea and paid three or four people in every crowd. And so it, it perpetuated that. So it's, yes, sir. You don't work for Obama, do you? <laughs> no, no. But I will tell you that um, one of the things that's hard for me to, to deal with is regardless of where you line up in your you know, political views, one of the things that's hard, for, it was hard for me on the outside end looking, looking into it, is PR can control what people think, whether it's true or false. Now, I'm, I'm a Christian. Um, I, I try to do everything in a way that I want to treat people that I want to be treated. And I think a lot of us, regardless of our religious beliefs, want to do that. We want to treat people the way we want to be treated. But you could, this is like the force, you know, like Star Wars, where you have it, you know, and you could use the force for the good team, for the good side, or the dark side. But it works either way. And they estimate somewhere between 70 and 85% of all news is a result of a press release, PR. Somebody paid to shape your view. Over 70%. Every study says over 70%. Some say 71, some say 84. Isn't that kind of crazy though? Think about watching the news tonight and how that affects your worldview. Now right now as a culture, what's the bias that the whole culture has that every time you turn on the news, when it comes to the environment, what's the thing we're all being told to do? We all need to go green. green. 
Green. Aha. So is that a is that a trend or is that going to be a long term? Like is that going to last? Is that a fad or a trend? Is that going to last beyond a year? You think? A trend. A trend. Now at some point when I was in seventh grade, some of you remember this. We were told that the hydrocarbons, you know, released from cars, uh, are damaging the ozone. Right. And so what we say is, as a country, somehow from my age 12 till now, we've gone from you know, we should probably go green to now it's irrefutable. If you don't go green, there's something wrong with you, okay? Now, regardless of whether we agree with this or not, this is a trend, right? Now, what if you were the expert in your community, right, about this infringement on rights and security, and you know everything about security because you're the guru? Couldn't you kind of appoint yourself to be the guru? And then when every time the media writes a story about security, they're like, we're live here with such and such from, and it's you. See what I'm saying? You can appoint yourself as an expert. And how does that translate to dollars and cents? It really helps. Have you guys ever seen, I, uh, like remember OJ, when the white Bronco was driving? And within like 10 minutes, they have a, an expert. <laughs> my Where brother, are they? My brother. Your brother? He, he was one of the guys they kept talking to all the time. Awesome. Well, that's an example. He's so, lawyer, but we didn't, we didn't believe it. Well, you know what I'm saying? So how do you find these experts? They find these experts because people in a room just like this decide they're going to start putting themselves as experts and making those connections so when things happen, you'll get the call. And I promise you it will dramatically impact your sales. So I'm saying, what if we gift wrapped our ID business, our security business, in a way that gift wrapped us like the Tiffany's box? Does that make sense? Where people now don't care about the price, they care about the value. Even though it's the same bracelet in the box. Is that making sense everybody? This is my definition. The art of systematically creating the closer, the closer that you can use to enhance your existing reputation and close more deals now. When you get in front of your ideal clients and likely buyers, again, the art of systematically creating the closer.